My name is uh, Lancelot Shortbottom. <laughs> and I am here to talk about my story of semen retention. How did I even get into semen retention? Me being uh, Lancelot Shortbottom, right? Uh, very, very innocent individual from uh, traveling the world. <laughs> How did I get into semen retention? What is the catalytic event that brought me into the practice in the first place? We're gonna get right into it. Like, comment, subscribe. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Like, comment, subscribe. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then we're gonna get right into it. So, this all began uh, when Lancelot, myself, Lancelot, not Sombra del Piso, um, was a young man in college. I studied business, this is after I got, I had a little stint in college the year prior, uh, a couple years prior. I'm studying something else. I was studying graphic design. And I just wasn't, I, was, I came back from England a year prior to that, and I just wasn't interested in really studying and buckling down and focusing on getting a degree. So um, let alone, you know, learning all of those programs, those graphic design programs, Silverlight, Photoshop Suite, all that stuff. So I was doing a lot of partying, and then I got kicked out of that school. Eventually, I got on track, and I ventured into another uh, degree program, business administration in a different college. So. As I was learning a whole bunch, I was learning of microeconomics, labor economics, accounting one, international business, all that, that stuff. I had my practices of, I didn't have any practice actually, I had my habits, let's just say that, of releasing. I was always going home, uh, turning on some lewd video, and doing, my, doing what I did. And I felt great afterwards, but then obviously I started to feel a little bit more and more of a debilitation on my mental faculties. I wasn't remembering a lot in school. Um, I didn't feel a lot of drive to go out and do things, even though I was partying excessively at the time. Um, I just felt very, very different. I chalked this up to maybe it was the foods I was eating. I was eating a lot of um, jalapeno cheddar Cheetos. And I, I do things in excess, like at least back then. And I figured it was because of this ex excess, excessive consumption of this snack uh, was the reason as to why, you know, perhaps my mental faculties was sort of lacking. So um, I didn't really think about semen retention too much at the time. And then um, I had a friend, this, uh, this Asian guy, I forgot his name, but um, he told me, hey, um, Lancelot, <laughs> have you heard about this, uh, this no-fat practice? I don't know, they're talking a lot about it on, on Reddit. And I was like, um, no, I haven't. Like, uh, why would you voluntarily be celibate? You get all these benefits, Lancelot. You could remember a whole bunch of things from the past. You could do way more physical activity, uh, a lot of spiritual connect connectivity, you'll start to feel. And I was like, um, <laughs> that's, that's cool, that's great and all, but why am I gonna be, I don't, I don't think that's a good uh, reason for me to try to be celibate. I don't think that's gonna take me anywhere. So he said, I don't know, I've been practicing it for a week and I feel a little different, man. And you know, obviously I chalked it up to, uh, like it's a whole bunch of uh, poo, right? It's a whole load of poo. Uh, it's cod's wallop and all that. And he said, Lancelot, you gotta try it. So that was my, I mean, before then, of course, I was reading a lot of spirituality, you know, books on spirituality. I, dab I dabbled a little bit in the Tripitaka, which is a Buddhist text. So that's sect of Buddhism. I grew up Catholic, you know, Roman Catholic. Um, so I knew about the Bible, of course, of course, the main stories being, you know, the, the garden story, Adam and Eve. This bug's trying to bite my, my nose. Learn about Adam and Eve, uh, the exodus from, of the Israelites from, uh, from Egypt, right, under the oppressive rule of Pharaoh. His name is just Pharaoh, right? He doesn't actually have a name. And uh, Jesus' crucifixion, the various, uh, the various stages. I didn't really hear about semen retention, and I just didn't really feel like sort of dabbling into the practice at all, but it was only until my friend, you know, brought it up to me where I decided to just uh, take the practice, do it. And I did it for a week and I felt so different. I felt weird. Of course, I wasn't, you know, doing it the right way. I was, uh, I didn't edge or anything, but I was looking at a little bit of lewd material, a couple uh, nude girls here and there, but I felt different because the retention was the main part I was retaining. And it made me feel very, very uncomfortable. I was getting a lot of stares. This is all symptoms that I, I'm deep in now. <laughs> but, because I'm, I'm a, by the way, I'm five months in the practice now. But 
Um, back then, I wasn't used to all these symptoms, people acting strange, people changing their emotions around me, seeing a lot of people just stare at me, just me remembering a lot of things. And it was just very, very powerful things. And I saw a truth in it. But of course, like any addiction, right, letting go of it is, you know, there was a lot of withdrawal symptoms to come about. So I was feeling a lot of, as I was, I was practicing it a lot. I, you know, I would go for a couple of days on semen retention and then I would stop doing it. You know, I would relapse and then I would be relapsing for weeks and then I'll go back on it. And this happened for years, years in college, after college, um, you name it. I was just relapsing, going back and forth. The thing is, I had a lot of interesting experiences with a lot of the people that I would meet and a lot of the people that would like leave my life. And I know that it revolved around this practice because the more you, semen retention, let's just say it, Lancelot says, semen retention is a practice of a high vibration, very, very high energy. So making a transition into that, that vibration, that, that frequency is going to, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be like sudden. It is going to require a shift. And I, as I was shifting through that higher vibration, because even though I was on and off the practice, I was still utilizing the practice. And no matter how long you do uh, do semen retention, you know, whether it be for two weeks, although I do say longer is better because it's you have better experiences and that locks in a lot more maturity from the practice. But no matter how long you are on semen retention, you are still going to obtain development. You are still going to develop in a, in a, a way that's in the direction of the higher frequencies. So even though it was prolonged um, for a long, long period of time, obviously, uh, for years, almost a decade I've been on this. It's only now within the past two years that I've started to really hone in on this practice and stay uh, you know, doing semen retention for long, long periods of time. This being the longest. Five months? This is nuts. That's my story, to be honest. I lost a lot of friends on this practice. I lost a lot of girls that I was interested in. I've made a lot of sacrifices. I've rejected a lot of people and I've been rejected on this practice. Um, my advice, honestly, to people that are seeking the practice, seeking going into this practice, is this. Do not allow the, what the, how the world views individuals of our caliber being a celibate, being on the practice of semen retention. Even though they see it as something negative and they'll sort of marginalize you and ostracize you, that's life. Do you want, do you feel like joining people and, and subduing your way of life and your belief system because you're not allowed in the clubhouse? Like who cares? Who cares? You know, it's like the, the blind leading the blind. Whatever people choose to do with their lives is great, right? But when you are celibate, the energy and the connection, when, as, for as long as I've been on this practice, the energy and the connection that you feel with the outside world is absolutely insane, right? You don't feel anxiety, you don't feel pain, you don't feel, it's, 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 really, it's really wild, it's really insane. You seek to try new things. Without a doubt, lady, gentlemen, ladies, if you're hearing it, that's great. Gentlemen, it's for you guys. Without a doubt, this is for sure the type of spirits that the pioneers of this world had. They sought to create a new world. This bridge, the idea of this bridge, right, was clearly created by individuals that were on semen retention, I, I kid you not. Well, if they weren't on semen retention consciously, they certainly weren't, wasn't uh, splurging all over, right? Splurging their, their essence. Definitely honing in, 100%. The inventions of the modern world, these cars, everything that we enjoy, this moped that's about to pass us right now, right? All, all spill-offs, so to speak, Lancelot says, of our most powerful essence, semen retention. And no matter what our individual stories are like, whether it be uh, you used to do drugs excessively and then you fell into the practice of semen retention and then you ascended, or you used to have some beautiful corporate life with a beautiful wife, right? But then it was all lost due to uh, an understanding, a metaphysical understanding of uh, words and passages 
in your chosen religious text. It doesn't matter what our stories are. What matters is that we are on the practice now and we're gonna utilize our power, we're gonna utilize our energy, we're gonna utilize our effort in order to get where we're, where we're supposed to go. It's enough that we're trapped in this place. Now let's use semen retention to get out of it and free a whole bunch of people around it. And with that being said, Lancelot Short Bottom is gone. If you like that content, like, comment, subscribe. Um, like I said, I am Lancelot Bottom. Lancelot says, drugs are horrible for the soul. Stay away from drugs. <laughs> it is not enlightening, right? It is not medicinal. It is all destructive to the spirit. I watched this guy on YouTube, Summer Del Piso. He always likes to say, don't let this world get you down. He also likes to talk about some idea of a false god presiding over this false reality in order to ensnare and condition innocent souls that were thrown here in the first place to identify with this world. That sounds like a whole bunch of cods wallop, Lancelot says, and, but it does sound a little believable. So I'm going to uh, agree with that. Somer del Piso, uh, that, that guy that I always listen to, also says, stay radiant. I'll see you guys in the next one. Whew.